in a study conducted by a university in Stockholm, the results said that about 75% of all schools needed to work on the methods concerning the development of education. So what that means is that only 25% of all schools are actually good at keeping themselves up to date. From that, we um, get the impression that our public education system are having a kind of like a poor um, development rate. One thing you can change that is by adjusting the school for everyone, including those students who are struggling. But how am I so sure of that? How am I so sure this, uh, this struggle exists? <laughs> it's probably because I'm one of these students. My name is Martin Wigston, and I'm a medical biology student. And God, I suck at examinations. I really do. I, um, I'm quite awful, I have to admit. I don't know if it's because of bad discipline from my side or if it's a lack of education that is focused on teaching in a more creative way. It's probably both. And I will not and I cannot blame the public education systems on my failures. It is my responsibility in the end that I succeed with my studies. But if the public education system are seeking new ways to change and de develop students' outlook on their studies, I might have a small input on that. <laughs> During my time as a student, I have had a real hard time finding interest in my subjects. Because of often because of a lack of connection to the real world. <laughs> I remember when I was reading this textbook about how you can change the DNA of a, of a bacteria in order to develop the next vaccine that could potentially save millions of lives. <laughs> that that sentence, that got me going. This was the reason why I started studying. Because to, to find value for me, for you, I, mean, I, I guess our society. <laughs> but uh, that enthusiasm kind of fades away after reading that textbook over and over again. You start to forget the real value that lies behind the textbook and you just started to see it more of as a shore, really. But that gets my input. During my time as a student, I joined a competition called iGEM. This competition gives the opportunity to students to develop and come up with their own ideas in order to solve problems on a biological level. One example I often um, tell about is there was this team who changed the DNA or bacteria in order to have it be able to absorb heavy metals. This bacteria was then implemented in a water filtration system. So when the water went through the filtration system, the bacteria could absorb the heavy metals from the water and make it more clean. So, this is competition, which encourages students to work as a team and form their own project. And usually this is during the summer. And then in late October, every team around the world meet up in Boston, where they compete in who has the best project. And just to give you another example of 
what idea you can come up with and work with. I would like to present my next example, my next idea, which is my team's project. I would like to you to imagine the bacteria as a factory where researchers and research companies use these bacteria in order to produce human components, often that is proteins, which they can be used in scientific research. And, and like a lot of you know, f factories are often uh, specialized in doing different things. For example, one factory could be making buses or planes or cars. Same thing goes with the bacteria. And another thing is often factories have a harder time making some products. Some are really easy to make, some are not. Again, same thing goes with bacteria. Some are really easy, some are not. That, that comes to our project. What we have research on is how we can help the bacteria to produce more of these hard-to-make proteins. We can maximize the capacity to produce more of these hard-to-make proteins. And we do this by tweaking the variables which are important for the production steps in the bacteria. So I've explained now what we do, but why do we do it? Currently, we are working on proteins that are linked to the disease Alzheimer's. Researchers who are well, researching on uh, Alzheimer's are having a hard time making these hard-to-make proteins because, well, they're hard to make, and they can't do any research because of that. But if our system that we are developing currently if that were to succeed, they could use our system in order to make this, make more of these hard-to-make proteins so they can research on them and perhaps eventually find a cure to Alzheimer's. And I would like to point out, it is not only researchers who are focused on diseases who need this system. It's is it, all, it is also a lot of more industries who are seeking a solution to this problem. And guess what? Goes pretty well, actually. We have <laughs> we have had our ups and downs, but it's going good. It's going pretty good. <laughs> now, will we be able to meet? all of our goals. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. But <laughs> no matter if we, <laughs> no matter if we succeed with all of our goals or not, I am extremely proud to have these people as my team members. Because I've never, never been so more driven than when I've been working with this project. <laughs> I've never been so more driven because to, I wanted to create real value and now I have the opportunity to do so. And I do not want to let my people down, my team members down. And I, it has created initiative to push myself. So, so the question is now, will, will iGEM cure all diseases? Of course not, no, that's not the point of it. The point is, it gives an opportunity for students to create real value, perhaps something may which is worth more than, you know, just a good grade. And
then will um, will this um, concept of connecting the real world into the public education system help all students? Again, no. But I think it is one good idea within a sea of a lot of good ideas. Because, from my personal experience, this concept has made all of the difference. Thank you.